everyone, this is Pamela Coey and this is part two of Mark making on a very large scale cold wax medium and oil painting. And these are two sheets of Arches oil paper that was originally on a roll and I hung it on the wall and taped it there and even from the very beginning it was just, you know, there's some, some bit of rippling that I will have to deal with when I mount these onto panel but that's going to be another video. and. So my palette here is Transparent Orange Iron Oxide, Payne's Gray, Asphaltum, Chromatic Black, and then of course the Quick Dry Titanium White. And it turned out to be a very limited palette, but I really liked it, lots of earth tones. And so this painting had a pretty lively and energetic start, and I like that just fine. And you know, I, I wanted to let it dry a little bit and keep looking at it and thinking about it. And what I decided was that I wanted more layering. So I like the start, but I wanted to have more of a feeling of layer. So what that meant was I had a lot of white paper showing and here you can see that I'm actually glazing. And a lot of my students will ask me, well, how do you make a glaze? And in this case, I'm just using a higher proportion of the cold wax medium to the oils and it becomes thinner, so there's less pigment. Even an opaque pigment can become quite transparent if you add enough cold wax medium. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm pretty much just moving around the entire painting, and I like to do that. I don't want to, you know, just dwell on any one area. I keep moving around, and I start to add some shapes as I'm doing here with my masking paper, which is just newsprint, that's my favorite thing to use. And I'm using all kinds of RNF pigment sticks as well and other mark making tools. And a lot of these things can be found on my resources page at artandsuccess.com. I tend to list all my favorites there because they're easy to find, they're easy for me to find, and you know, you might wanna try some of those as well. But so you can see that I'm putting the paint on uh, many times with the Messermeister tool or a silicone tool. And what I'm trying to do here is, yes, I'm trying to glaze, but I'm also trying to vary that thickness. So a lot of times you'll see me putting the paint on and it's really thick. And then you'll notice me peeling it back with a silicone tool or with newsprint pressed against the paint to lift some of that paint or tracing paper or tissue paper. So whatever it is, you know, if the paint's too thick, you can manipulate it. You can put it on and take it off and sometimes I'll even draw back into a really thick shape and that's what this stage right now is you know it's it's definitely going into that middle stage for me because I'm thinking more I'm thinking about shape and and the glaze had to be put on the painting when it was really dry and all the decisions that happen as I go into this painting and I put the glazing on deciding whether I want to keep it thick or thin, deciding what shapes go where, always keeping in mind the balance of the painting, you know, the heaviness that I might feel in one portion needs to be balanced by something else, and always thinking about variation of any shape, whether it's circle, square, you know, line. Uh, if I have one kind of line, how can I, when I go back into it and I create another line, how can I vary that? Can it be a little bit thicker in width? Can it be a little bit uh, thicker in, say, how thick the paint alone is? And that's where having a variety of mark making tools and having some RNF pigment sticks, which if you press really hard, you get a nice thick juicy line. If you don't press as hard, you get a thin, almost like a dry brush type mark. And for me, it's every time I go back into the painting, I try to change the color a little bit by adding some black or some white or some a tone of black and white or perhaps warm it up with some of that transparent orange iron oxide. Or even with Payne's Gray, when you add white to that, you get a little bit of a light blue, which you can see here, it's a lovely color. And Again, it's just all about variation and trying to make sure that every time I go back into the painting, I'm thinking about something a little bit different so that I keep the interest level high in the painting. That's what I'm trying to do for myself. I mean, I myself want to be interested in this painting. So 
Anyways, that's pretty much what I'm doing here. And feel free to post questions or comments if you have any questions. And you'll see as I move on in this painting that what happens when you glaze is that your lights, anything that's kind of light toned or a light value is gonna go darker. And anything that's dark is actually gonna go lighter. It's one of those strangest things. So actually when I was glazing this painting, I got to a point where it was actually pretty sad. That lower left-hand corner, you can see how dark it's getting. And as I keep going through this painting, it did get darker and darker. And I sat with it for a while, just you know, looked at it from my desk every day, and I was thinking, wow, it's really gotten dark. And it's that feeling that sometimes you get when you feel like maybe you, you know, maybe you went too far, maybe you lost things that you loved. And like here in that upper left-hand corner, I just desaturated this really lovely color of that transparent orange iron oxide. So, but it's okay. The, the main thing to keep in mind is that it's perfectly fine if you lose something or if you lose contrast because you just glaze, which is what's gonna happen here. I'm basically gonna, gonna compress the values by glazing because the lights get darker and the darks get lighter. I don't have that high contrast that I had before. So as I was looking at it and thinking, you know, it's gotten pretty, um, pretty dark. Then all I have to do is put that contrast back in again. So that's what I'm going to be working toward. And now I've got some tracing paper and I'm putting it on top of the dry painting. And what I'm doing is I'm working on creating a stencil. And that stencil, sometimes I tear it, sometimes I cut it, and other times it needs to be kind of precise because I know what I want. And I wanted a big shape here. I wanted to make that area lighter. And so what I'm doing is I'm using tracing paper to create the shape that I want, to create the stencil that I want. And then I'm gonna be going in with a lighter color. So I'm making that area lighter. You'll see in just, just a second here, there's more tracing paper and I'm actually being quite careful about the edge. And I had to tape the mask the mask that's made out of newsprint up there so that I could piece together a couple different sheets of paper basically. And uh, there's the white paint. So you can see that's titanium white and there is not, I don't think there was any other color in there. So that's pretty just white paint. Filling in that stencil and then when I remove the stencil you'll see that, you know, that area is going to pop. It's going to be really light. but. You know, now then it's going to be a little bit out of place because it's such a light shape and then I have to deal with that. So here I'm going to take the paper off, which is the stencil, and then there's the remaining shape, which, you know, I, it was a very specific shape that I wanted. Now I'm going back in with tissue paper and a brayer and lifting some of that and then I'm drawing back into it. Anything to just, you know, soften some edges draw back into it. There's more of that tissue paper to lift some paint. I needed variation within that really big shape. That, there I just softened an edge and here I'm taking a paper towel and actually lifting a lot of that white paint. And then I take a ruler and I draw into it a black juicy line. So layering just means that your, you know, whatever you have, you, you pretty much just don't worry about covering up something, even if you love it, because when you look at a painting, you can feel like that artist just didn't worry about covering up a, a shape that maybe was really cool, but it's just a matter of going back in and layering and layering. So there is a lot of that going on here. And I'm repeating that circular form. It's primarily curvilinear. I wanted to keep that. I like that. I also like geometry, so there are a few rectilinear lines in there. Again, trying to vary, you know, what else can I do with the circle that I haven't already done? I've already done a really big half circle. I've done ovals, I've done dark circles, light circles. Well, here's one where I created a stencil and I actually put some lines 
close lines, which created a pattern in the circular form. I like to do that a lot. Just, you know, anything that's interesting at the time. So it's very explorative, but at the same time, the, you know, it, it's, um, it's getting there. And I still have to mount these onto two panels. And I will be doing that when this is completely dry. And then, you know, once it's on the panels, I'll be able to do the finishing touches. But for now, you know, at the end of this video, it's pretty much going to be close to done. So thanks everyone, bye now.